Cursor has just entered the CLI wars. They've just released Cursor CLI. It's now in beta. I've been using it for a few days now already as a Cursor ambassador. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to show you through it in this video. Um, just a few points from them. You can use it with your preferred IDE. So you could use it with VS Code, with JetBrains, whatever you want. And of course with Cursor too. And you can write powerful scripts and automations. Uh, now that it's CLI basically gives you an API to Cursor, which is awesome. So let's jump into the video. So I've just got it now. I want to try GPT-5. That would be cool. I've already installed the CLI. And to run it, we just do cursor agent and we're live. So here you can type in what you want. Um, let's do the slash command just to show us some of the things it does. So I'm going to do to model LS. Nice. I've got GPT-5 10 minutes ago. I didn't have this, so that's cool. Uh, let's use that actually. And um, let's see. I mean, here are all the different commands. So you can do new chats, uh, toggle Vim keys, help. Let's see what the help does. I haven't done this yet. Okay, so it will just tell us about like different features. So let's see what is auto run. So toggle auto run um, and some information here. I guess there's not, not a ton going on there. But anyway, here are all the different options you have, but let's actually get into it and run it. I was working on this test right now, so I'm actually gonna like ask it to do a bit more. I wanna add more tests. So I've written my prompt here. I wanna add more tests to this file. I wanna see how my AI prompt is running. So I'm just gonna, um, I, I've been adding some tests just now and I'm gonna add a few more. So I want more realistic examples of how people might use uh, my app and how the AI will answer support queries based on what's already in the inbox. So you can see it's running um, full on CLI tool here similar to Claude code. You can see it's reading different files, it's scrapped um, what it needs. By the way, while we're waiting for this to finish, it does use cursor rules as well, which is cool, at least based on the home page they had. So it can use all of that. Um, it should actually be able to use some of my, it's doing a search. I guess I needed to actually tag the test uh, for it to use that, or oh, sorry, not the test, the cursor rule for it to use it. But it's thinking through and of course, this is using GPT-5 as well. So that's really cool. I've been using it for the last hour or two as I've been doing some work. Um, I don't have any strong opinions on it yet. It seems to do the job. I find it hard to tell the difference between all these models. But based on the benchmarks, it's supposed to be pretty good. And I think it's been doing a solid job for me so far. It is taking its time right now. Um, I paused the video a bit and it just, it's still going. So I wonder what's happening here. We can do a follow up. I wanna get the first message done because then I can show you a bit more about the CLI. Um, but yeah, in the meantime here, you can see GPT-5 fast is now enabled. So I've been using that a bit, which is cool. GPT for regular GPT-5 as well is possible. Okay, I just canceled it because it was taking way too long. So let's see if I can get it to work again. So let's see, maybe it will have better luck this time. Maybe I was just impatient, but it was really taking quite a long time. Okay, here you can see it's starting to use up the tokens again. It seems to be doing stuff before it was just paused on 60, so maybe it really had stored. And of course the CLI tool is in beta and it's possible that GPT-5 is being completely overloaded right now as the entire world is trying to use it. So I'm not really sure who was up for here, uh, but let's see if we can make more progress. Otherwise, I'm just gonna try use a different LLM. I'll just use Sonnet to see what we can do with the CLI. Okay, I've lost patience now, so I'm gonna go for Opus. Well, I can't do this in the middle of a conversation. Uh, so all these messages just pop up and always disappear. Uh, you don't quite have enough time to read it. So let's stop and I'm gonna try run this again with a different model. So let's see, we can do new chat. Let's do that. Um, right. Let's not do that. I want to do the model. Let's change it to Opus 4.1 also came out recently. It's actually crazy how much is changing just like day to day, like tons of new models coming out. New state of the art every single day. Oh, file not found. Okay. So hopefully it will be able to find it itself. Okay. It's found the file now. Hopefully we can make progress this time around. Hopefully that was just like uh, GPT-5 stalling. Okay, yeah, so here you can start to see what's happening. So you can see it's gonna add six to-dos, uh, which is cool. Um, so it's that task list, sort of like a task master type thing. Also, uh, Cursor does it as well. So now it's started working on the first to-do. Good that we're making more progress this time around. Maybe GPT-5 isn't good enough with these tools yet. 
Okay, we've made some progress here. It did take quite a while to do all of that, but now you can start to see what this looks like. Obviously, we can see the code in the editor, uh, what's happened here. I think it will try and lint itself soon because it has made uh, some mistakes, as you can see, the TypeScript errors. Let's do Control R to review. Cool, so here you can see we can review things. We can like add follow-ups about onto specific files. We can do I to insert as well. Let's make this a bit bigger, but here you can see, uh, I'm not gonna go into the test. I uh, assume it's done a decent job because really any LLM should do a decent job on these tests. It's added quite a lot of tests. Okay, <laughs> that was more than I expected. And then we can sort of uh, use the arrow keys and left and right to jump through different files. We only have one file here, so there's not that much to do. And it's still going. I don't know what this slowness is. I think it would be nice to see what the progress is. Okay, so we keep going. I've posted this video a lot, so it's like you're not seeing all the slowness that I'm seeing right now. Okay, now it's starting to move. Oh, and it went and did all six tasks. So I'm actually curious myself just to go and test it, how these came out. I'm gonna pause while I do that. And here you can see um, the end of what it's done, which overall uh, looks like it's a solid test, even though I barely read the code or the, the test itself. Okay, the tests ran, which is cool. Um, it didn't do exactly what I wanted, but actually the tests have done their job because now I can see how it's coming out. This isn't relevant to you guys. I've got to go fix up my actual code. The tests did what they needed to do. This is for Inbox Zero, by the way. So you'll be able to see the code for this live on my GitHub later if you click here, open source. So I'm actually going to get the AI to fix it because the tests show what they need to show, which is good. But now I understand that my actual code needs fixing. So over here, the prompt that I have set up here is wrong. And you can see now it's going to read this file as it's first to do. It's gonna update the prompt to focus on extracting actionable patterns and response templates, which is good. Make the output more concise and structured for reply drafting. All good stuff. Um, it's the same stuff all over again. You're probably familiar uh, with this from how Cursor usually works, but this is all in a CLI tool. So it's programmable. I'm sure they're gonna do a lot more with it. Um, this is the very first version that has been released. But yeah, hopefully you found that interesting. And if you haven't already, try out Inbox Zero at getinboxzero.com. Till next time.